Hi, everyone. I know, I know, I missed Monday. Oh, my word, the week just went so fast. Um, had my craft fair on Friday, on Saturday, then church on Sunday, and then this week has just flown by. Um, I will not be back until Wednesday or Thursday of next week because we are going on vacation. So I'm unplugging. So, yeah. Anyway, so we are on Chapter 4 of Whirly Gig by Paul Fleischman. And the title of this chapter is Miami, Florida. Still dark outside. No traffic. Just me. This is how I like it. Muy tranquila. I never saw a street sweeper machine in my life until I came from Puerto Rico. The first week here, it woke me up. I was 11. I thought it was a monster. Then I looked out the window and saw it pass. I saw the man inside. I wondered what he thinks about driving all night in the dark, alone. And now I'm driving a street sweeper. Maybe the same one. And now I know what the driver thinks, watching the curb, watching parked cars, looking down at the gutter broom, thinking when to use the sprayer, thinking about other times in my life, enjoying the peaceful night. Peace is a very hard thing to find. The Pope is always asking for peace. He tells all the countries to stop their wars. Every year he tells them, but more wars always come. Always people disagree and fight. I think about why this is, why this is while I drive. I think about the sheer water bird. It's March, still cool at night, like Puerto Rico in the mountains where I lived. The air was cool there. Life was more calm. For a while, anyway. Then my father had to sell our farm to a power company. Lots of families had to. They covered our farm with water to make a lake, to make electricity. Many people there were angry. My family left the mountains where we'd always lived. We moved to San Juan on the coast. San Juan is a very big city. There were five children in the family. People laughed at how we talked. Boys fought me. Some people laughed at my father's straw hat. Many times I heard my father and mother argue. Other people argued against the government. Some wanted Puerto Rico to join the United States. Others wanted it to be its own country. Others wanted it to be something else. All were fighting against each other. One day, a bomb went off near our house. I ran to see. Then I wish I didn't. I saw a man lying down in his own blood. One month later, we flew in a plane to Miami. No one, my fam no one in my family spoke English. In the mountains, there was only Spanish. In school here, I listened to the teacher, but I didn't understand anything. I would look a long time at her ring and her necklace and her shoes and at other students out the window. That's all I did that first year. The next year, I went to junior high. There was lots to look at in woodworking class, but my teacher got mad when I didn't look at him. He asked me a question one time. I didn't know what he said, so I didn't say anything back. His face got red. He ran up to my chair, then he grabbed my hair and lifted me up and yelled some words right in my face. I hated that teacher. He didn't know Spanish. When he let me go, I swore at him in Spanish. Then I ran out of the room and went home. Next week, they made me take a test. 
Then they said I could move to a different school. I was glad. Then I went there. It was a school for retarded children. That's where they put kids who didn't know English. <coughs> I told my father I wouldn't go. He said, school in America makes your life better. We had lots of arguments. I pretended to go, but instead I would walk around or go to the park to watch the tennis players. When I was 14, I got a job in a restaurant when I was supposed to be in school. I brought home the money and gave it to my father. I knew he needed it for the rent. He took it. I quit pretending to go to school after that. In the restaurant, I worked the dishwasher machine. Everyone spoke Spanish. I loved it there. The waitresses all called me flaco because I was skinny. They used to bring me food. It was a good job. But people argued there too. There were two cooks, one from Puerto Rico. He only liked Puerto Rican salsa music. While Willie Colon was his favorite. He brought in tapes of Willie Colon's band and would hit the spatula on the grill like a drum. The other cook was from Jamaica. He only liked reggae. On weekends, there was a third cook from Cuba. They used to fight over the tape player. Not even the Pope could stop this war. Four years I worked there. Then the restaurant closed. I got a job in a different restaurant. Many people spoke English there. I learned how to speak from them. Constancia was one of the waitresses, 18 years old, also from Puerto Rico. She was so beautiful that everyone gave her big tips. Some she would give to the dishwasher and busboys. She always gave more to me than to the others. We became engaged. Then we got married. That was a very happy time. We lived with her mother. Constancia was not only beautiful, but very kind, very good. Every day I told myself that I was lucky. I went to class at night to learn English better, to get a better job. English is very strange. You chop a tree down, then you chop it up. Muy loco. I filled out a form and got a job with the city, fixing holes in the street. Much more money than from the restaurant. We had a party to celebrate. At the party, Constancia announced that she was pregnant. Her mother, my mother, my father, everyone was very happy for us. Down that street to the right at the red light is the hospital where the baby was born. A very beautiful little girl. Everyone loved her very much. Constancia stopped work in the restaurant to stay home with the baby. She was a very good mother. When the baby was just one year old, it got a cold. This cold got worse. Then it went into the baby's lungs. It kept coughing and sweating and then it died. After this, Constancia changed. She didn't go back to work in the restaurant. She missed the baby very much. Instead of hearing the baby's voice, she turned on the TV and let it talk all day long. When she watched, her eyes didn't move. Her face was like one of the statues in church. One year later, we, later, we had another baby, this time a boy. We named him Raul. This time, Constancia was different. Instead of laughing and smiling at the baby, she was worried all the time. She was afraid he would get sick like the first baby. Raul learned how to crawl and started putting everything in his mouth. Every day, Constancia would mop the floor and vacuum the rug. She bought a special spray to kill germs. She sprayed it on his toys and the TV and the furniture. In summer, 
Red dust falls on Miami. People say it's from the desert in Africa that the wind blows it across the ocean. Constancia was afraid it would bring bad diseases. She went to a botanica and bought special candles and statues of saints and prayers to hang over Raul's crib. When Raul was four, Constancia's grandmother and grandfather came from Puerto Rico to live in our house. All day, the grandfather played dominoes in our kitchen with the man next door and argued about politics. He also liked to watch soccer on TV. His hearing was bad, so the TV had to be loud. The grandmother was always telling Constancia how to take care of Raul. Feed him more plantain like in Puerto Rico. French fries are very bad for the stomach. We taught Raul English, but the grandparents didn't like this. We talked to him in English. They talked to him in Spanish. Constancia's mother tried to keep everything peaceful. Impossible. It was like a war in our house. One night on TV, I saw a picture of a bird flying over the ocean. The announcer said this bird lives almost its, all its life on the ocean. He said it was called a shearwater. I wished that I could be that bird, live alone far away from land, no other birds around, very peaceful. I had a cousin in New Jersey. He moved in with us, 17 years old. Constancia's mother wanted him to leave. He was always playing rock and roll on the radio. He stayed out at night very late. I saved enough money for a car. The first time he drove it, he had an accident. We had a big argument about it. Then I lost my job. All day I was home with Raul. I tried to play with him. Constancia wouldn't let him play in the street or even on the sidewalk. He couldn't ride in the car unless he wore a special charm around his neck. I looked for a job but couldn't find anything. Our money got very low. Constancia started bringing in money by taking care of babies for women who worked. First, it was two babies, then three, then five. There was always a baby crying and the grandparents yelling and the TV loud and rock and roll loud, everybody arguing. One morning, very early, before it was light, I got in the car and drove. Not driving to look for a job, just driving. I got out of Miami, drove through the Everglades, very peaceful. I rolled down the windows, it felt great. I drove two hours across to the Gulf. I parked at a beach. I walked out, watched the waves. No one was there. A little breeze off the water, very quiet, very nice. After a while, I got hungry. I got back in the car and drove further. I came to a town. I walked out on the pier. Nailed to the wall of a restaurant was a little marching band made of wood. An arrow under it pointed to the front door and said, march on in. I went in and ate breakfast. Then I walked to the end of the pier. It was still early and cool. I saw people getting on a fishing boat. Then I remembered the shearwater bird. I'd been thinking about it for months. They said you could see it from land. You'd have to go on a boat. I asked the captain if he'd ever seen one. He said, all the time. I told him I didn't want to fish. I only wanted to see a shearwater. He let me on for half price. We left. Everyone else was busy getting their poles ready. Not me. I stood up at the front looking for the bird. The captain would stop to let people fish, then start up again. I looked back. I couldn't see land. That felt good. I felt like a sheer water. The sky was clear, the water was very calm. We went farther and farther. Then the captain called to me. He pointed. Following the boat was a flock of birds diving into the water, fighting over fish. Stealing fish from each other, 
very noisy. He said, those were sheer waters. I watched. I couldn't believe those were the birds I'd been dreaming of. They followed us a long way. I felt sad all the way back to land. I got off the boat and walked down the pier. I came to that wooden marching band. I stopped and looked. There was a trumpet, trombone, clarinet, and drum. Birds don't live alone, I told myself. They live in flocks like people. People are always in a group, like that little wooden band. And whenever there's a group, there's fighting. If the people in a group get along, maybe they make a good music instead of arguing like Willie Colon's band. But usually not. That's how life is. I stared at that marching band. Then I got in the car and drove home. That was last year. In summer, I got this job driving the sweet street sweeper. Two o'clock in the morning till 10. Very peaceful during the night. Then the sun comes up. The traffic starts. Everyone's in a hurry. Cars honk and go around me. All that will start in an hour. I'm ready for it. I always bring a tape player. I'll put on some music. Willie Colon's band. And that's the end of chapter four. It's been good to be here and I will see you next week. Probably Wednesday or Thursday night. Until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. Shalom.